day, even though it's gloomy and rough in the morning. I get to thank you for my um, this day and night. And I pray, Lord, that you just continue working in all of our lives. Uh, as we pass through, uh, I pray that in your sick bay today, uh, you might get through to uh, Ann and Shirley from the Praise Keeper. Let her heal um, Allison and Morgan Connor. We just thank you, Lord, so much. We love you. I pray that Ann becomes your eternal name. Amen. Amen. And also, let's pray for Tiff. She is on her way to, to now. yeah, on her way to Florida. So, hey, so Tiffy, if you're listening. <laughs> All right. Weeks, I want to hold a sign up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, glad everyone's here today. Um, today's lesson, I was doing my uh, daily Bible reading. Now, the, that's different than the scripture, and it's the daily tra getting through the Bible in a year. And at the beginning of the week, God just really spoke to me on this thought and just, developed it throughout the week so um, it's called bring it in and I usually put the date on it I forgot um, but did you ever hear a sports coach maybe you were in sports or maybe you've watched it on TV or you've heard it I I remember hearing it when Devin when Devin was playing basketball and he had a homeschool group and I would drive him to that and watch all the games and stay to all the practices because I was that mom <laughs> <laughs> helicopter mom I think is what they call it and I'm okay with that <laughs> and you know just on a side note Sam has thanked me for being a helicopter mom you know um, by helicopter you mean a mom that that hovers and knows everything that they can about what's going on and protects their kids so that was that was me anyway so Devin's homeschool team the coach um, brother Foreman he would say bring it in you know when the team has you know they were um, needing to focus because maybe the other team was scoring and they were kind of they were getting uh, jolted you know like a little frazzled because they were starting to lose really bad you know and the coach needed to get them to refocus so that they were looking at the end prize and not what was going on right now and the end prize would be winning you know, at the very least, finishing the game the best that you can. But the objective was to win. And so he would say, bring it in, bring it in. And then wherever the players were, you know, usually off talking or drinking or something like that. And then they would all come together, kind of like a huddle. And he'd say, bring it in. We're going to um, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 to 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 to 19. Bring it in. All right. Helpful if I go to chapter 5. Oh, dear. That has to work like a generation, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm in 1 Corinthians, so. Oh. <laughs> well, we're past the kids, so uh -huh. don't we? Uh-huh. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 to 19. Bring it in. So we have here, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Verse 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. When I looked up the word reconciliation in the Webster's 1828, it defines it as the means by which sinners are brought into a state of favor with God. Okay, so just keep that... That, that word reconciliation, ministry of reconciliation, is what we're looking at today. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. Colossians 1, 19 to 21. Here it says in verse 19, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Verse 20, And having made peace 
through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or in heaven. Verse 21, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Okay, remember that definition. Reconciliation means brought in a state of favor with God. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, sin separated them from God and all humanity after that. Except, um, well, then animal, at that time, animal blood sacrifices became the reconciliation to God for them. But then Jesus Christ became the ultimate propitiation or atonement for our sins. I, I once saw a picture and it has stuck with me ever since. Um, and it, it's a picture of, they didn't show God, but just kind of had God over here. And then they had man over here. And there was a great divide, like, a, like two cliffs going off. And so there was all this. But in the middle, there was a drawbridge. And it was in the shape of a cross. And that picture has always stuck with me. That's what this is. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross and when he rose from the grave, we can be reconciled to God. We can be brought back into favor with God through that drawbridge of the cross. Without Jesus Christ becoming the propitiation or atonement for our sin, we could never be reconciled to God because sin and God do not go together. That's where the wonderful atonement of the blood of Jesus Christ comes in. That's why when Jesus died, he had to take the, he had to take the blood to the, to the mercy seat and sprinkle it on the mercy seat. That is that drawbridge yeah, from man to God. The mercy seat, God is a righteous God and will judge, and he will ju judge oh, okay. sin. And he will judge those who aren't saved because he is righteous. And that mercy seat, that is where the blood was sprinkled and where that book can be opened and say, Donna's name is here, Julie's name is here, and that atonement has been made for us. And God shows us, through sending Jesus, to become that propitiation for our sin, God has shown us mercy. And now we, now we can have life eternal through that. So it's really, it just was really wonderful to go over this and just focus on, you know, we live our Christian lives and we listen to the messages and we read our Bible, but sometimes we do forget that Jesus became the propitiation for our sin that Jesus paid the price that we could never pay so that we could be reconciled to God. And it really is a beautiful picture. Like I said, that one of the cross drawbridge that has always stayed in my mind because I'm a very visual and literal person and I, and I think that way. So that, let, that, sh that in my mind just shows me, okay, that's how I can get to God is only through, that, through the cross and the blood that was shed on Calvary for me and accepting that gift of salvation. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 19 that we first read, that tells us that through Jesus Christ, we as believers are reconciled to God. But it also tells us something else. And this is what stuck out to me I, you know, earlier in the week when I'm doing my Bible reading, is that these verses, and I have it in the purple about midway down, almost midway down, these verses also tell us that He, God, has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He's given us, and he didn't say it once in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 19. He said it twice. And then in Colossians 19, 20 through 21, you know, talks about us being reconciled. So going back to that definition that uh, Webster's had, sinners being brought into a state of favor with God. So what is the ministry of reconciliation that we've been given? 
we just talked about how God reconciled man to himself. But then we also just went over how twice in that same passage, he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. So number one, this is the most important, is that we are to show people how they can be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. This is called soul winning. This is called sharing the gospel. This is called giving the good news. We are not to keep this to ourselves because that would be in direct violation of the scriptures and we're going to go over that. Um, but this is the most, this is what God has commissioned us to do. Commission means giving a job, giving a job to. This is our job. Uh, Mark 16, 15, and let's just go there. We have time. We can go there, I think. Mark 16, 15. Anyone have it? Yeah. Go ahead, Carol. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, here, you know, this is the commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, we, you know, we've talked about this before. We can't be all over the world and stuff, but this is why we take part in missions. This is why us giving to missions, aside from our tithes and even offerings, is so important. And I know some people have, you know, said that the idea of a missions commitment, you know, that they would rather do it a diff different way. But I'll tell you here at Solid Rock Baptist Church and any other church that does a missions program like that, where they have you commit an amount, is because they're, you have to be able to plan for that. Pastor has to be able to plan for the missionaries that we're going to support. I've taken over um, some of the missions for him so that I'm going to now be the one, you know, I've been posting and trying to write updates in the, in the bulletin, and also I'll be communicating with our missionaries, and then those that send packets, responding to that, um, just so that I can take something that's been on pastor's plate and take that off for him. But this is why, so we have missionaries contacting us, you know, a lot for support. Um, and pastor's very selective. But also, we're at the point I had to send out an email yesterday uh, to a missionary, mis mis uh, missionary to the military, actually, which ha is very close to our hearts. They're in Germany. And I had to tell them, say, we, I'm sorry, at this time we're unable to take on any further missionaries because pastor can only work with that commitment that was put in. So that's just, you know, a little something to tell you why that commitment card is so important and why some, you know, we get to the end of the year and if people have left or just decide not to give their missions, there's a deficit. And that's what happened this year. And so then pastor has to rearrange and um, figure out, okay, you know, do we have to drop missionaries, which is a horrible thing to have to do. Can we take on new missionaries? So just some insight on why that missions commitment is just so important. But here's our commission. You know, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And can I say, I believe that a lot of the blessings that Pastor and I have received in our life have been because of missions giving. I truly believe that. Um, we don't just talk it. We really try to live it. And let's go to James 5.20 talking about this being commissioned to reconcile sinners to God. James 5.20. Anyone have that one and want to read it? I got it. Okay. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. Those of us that are soul winning, which should be every one of us, and soul winning doesn't necessarily mean knocking door to door. No, it means giving out the tracts. It means contacting people. It means giving people your testimony, saying, do you know the Lord? Um, you know, there's so many different ways that we're doing it, but it, the premise is the same, giving the gospel to people. And this verse says that, you know, those of us that are converting the sinner from the error of his ways, we're saving a soul from death by reconciling these sinners to God, just like that happened with us. You know, we heard the gospel, 
and we accepted Jesus Christ and you know so we were reconciled to God so this is our job is to show mankind to show our to show our neighbors to show our family you can be reconciled to God sin is dividing you right now from God but it doesn't have to stay that way you know best way to soul win is to give your testimony tell them what happened to you when you accepted Christ as your Savior because some people say oh I, I you know I can't you can tell them what happened to you when you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and and why you did and and how you did and just share it and that is soul winning and Proverbs 11 verse 30 we'll go there together you guys already there <laughs> All right, just give me a second, I'll get there. See, I keep my commitment card in my Bible so that I don't lose focus because I don't want to just write a check out every week. I want it to mean something, and I'll stumble across that while I'm going through, um, going through my Bible for verses. And it's just a reminder, yeah, pray for your missionaries. Okay, Proverbs 11.30. All right. Who's got that? Donna? The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Okay. He that winneth souls is wise. Those of us that, I mean, I want to be wise. I want to be counted as wise. Well, you know, here God says, he that winneth souls is wise. Why? Because our focus is on Jesus when we're winning souls. And that's... You know, the Bible also says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, okay? Understanding who God is and what he has done for us, that will give us the, the fear, the healthy, what that is is a healthy respect and understanding of how big God is. And, I mean, we'll never grasp it all, but um, sometimes I think we really have God down here when he should be way up here. And, you know... So we need to make sure that we're winning souls and that we're being wise. And then that'll, that'll be fruit to our account in heaven. So we've just talked about, you know, the ministry of reconciliation that God gave us twice in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 19. We've talked about how he's commissioned us with bringing people to God. You know, we can't make people accept Jesus. And... I've, you know, Pastor and I have really, really learned this, you know, and, and sometimes maybe we've just kept focusing and focusing. People have to make their own decisions. And we know, because we've already been reconciled to God, and we know what a wonderful life that brings and how he carries us through life storms. But the saying is, is you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Our job is not to make people accept the gospel. This is why Pastor has um, really tried to help us to understand our job when we're out telling people about the Lord is not to get them to say a prayer after us. Say this prayer and you'll be on your way to heaven. Okay, it doesn't work like that. And too many ministries are perpetuating that and these people never ever made a decision for God. Now there does come a point, Jen and I have been out soul winning and I have led people to the Lord there comes a point where I just have to say, okay, God, you know I'm not pushing them into this. I'm presenting it to them. And I even say, because I get so, I, I never want to have somebody pray after me, you know, so I can come say, oh, we had someone saved. I even go so far as to say, do not do this for me. If you don't want to do this right now, I get it. You know, you can read this later, and I pray you'll make that decision. Um, and sometimes they say, no, I want to do it, you know, I, I want to. So that, there, that's kind of a fine line. But we are not in the business here at Solid Rock Baptist Church. You know, it's not a number game. It is not a number game. It is a soul game. And that's what this is all about, the ministry of reconciliation, um, bringing sinners to God and saying, do you see that cross drawbridge? It's here, and you can go across it, and you can be reconciled to God. And you can go to heaven, too. And you can be a part of this wonderful family of God that we have. All right, so that's the first part of that commission to us, the ministry of reconciliation. 
So the ministry of reconciliation, number two, also applies to the thought of bring it in, bring it in. And uh, I say this sometimes to, um, to Evan when he comes, uh, you know, Kylie's, Kylie's little brother, Evan. Uh, you know, I'll see him and say, bring it in, Evan. And I had just thought of that. I forgot I did that, but I'm meaning I want him to come up by me and, and love on me a little bit, and know I love him. That's, oh, he is. <laughs> he is so yummy. <laughs> so bringing it in. When we become reconciled to God through Jesus, we become part of the family of God or a team. You know, thinking back to Devin's coach and bringing in the team. Well, we become part of the family of God. And I don't think, we talk about it a lot in here because I think it's such a big thing and it doesn't get talked about a lot. We are family. We are, and we're here for each other. And, you know, we need to be reaching out to each other. We need to love one another. We need to overlook faults. And kind of, you know, sometimes we as a body of believers or local church, we'll need to focus a little bit more on the bring it in. You know, it made me think about, we had, you know, a, a tough church, I, don't, I wouldn't say split, but kind of split, you know, where people were, you know, <laughs> they were leaving left and right. It's like, oh my goodness, you know. Um, and after a time like that, you know, really, it feels like the last few years have been bring it in, bring it in to those that are here and those that come in. Um, because when we bring it in, we can, just like Devin's team, they, were, they could refocus and say, okay, all right, don't forget, I don't know any of the positions. Uh, I don't know any basketball position, whatever the position. Okay, remember, this is your position. This is what you're doing. Okay, remember, you're this position and this is what you're doing. It's awful, I don't know any of those. Um, maybe a guard or something, whatever. And, uh, you know, so this is what it is with us is sometimes we often need to be remember, okay, okay, family of God here, this is your position. 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 Let's go. Go. You remember, like, one, two, three, go, team, go. Ah! Okay, same here, SRBC. <laughs> Bring it in and go, team, go. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes this requires the reconciling or bringing back into favor of believers one with another. Okay? So we talked about reconciling the sinners to God and how we need to be soul winning and bringing them to God so that they can be reconciled, but that is their choice. But we have made the choice to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, become part of this family of God. We've been reconciled to God because of the blood of Jesus. And now the second part of that commission is for us to reconcile, make sure that we reconcile one with another in the ministry. Believers with believers. We're humans and therefore we are imperfect. And if you, if you have a problem saying I'm sorry to a sister or brother in Christ, get over it and practice. Because it's one of the best things that you can ever do for you, more yourself than them. Yes, Jen? I was just thinking about this verse this morning, the Ephesians 4.32. Mm -hmm. um, thinking of somebody um, that has a lot of unforgiveness. And that's one thing that God's really worked on me about forgiving people and my dad and just different people. I mean, if you can't forgive somebody and you forgive you, yep. you did way worse than probably that person ever did. Yep, <laughs> that is so cute. Yeah, be, and, and that's great because God knew we would need to be reconciled one to another, to be brought back into favor one with another because he knows we're imperfect. And that's why he gave this verse, Ephesians 4.32. Let's turn there in our Bibles and look at it. A lot of times I just put them on the paper just so that um, those getting the paper, if they don't have access to, because these papers seem to go all over. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Them and all their errors. <laughs> all right. Ephesians 4.32 says, and, and my mom, I don't know where I learned this. I'm assuming it was my mom when we were young. 
be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Woo-hoo, whoopity-doo, <laughs> Ephesians 4.32. I <laughs> draw. So I never forgot it, and I'm not sure where I learned it, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not, she's probably, if she ever watched, she's probably, I didn't teach you that. <laughs> um, I don't know where I learned it. I don't know, but I, I know I, we've talked about what, how much music plays a role in, mem you know, in our memory. And I've always remembered that verse because of the little jingle. <laughs> remember that lesson about those advertisements? Yes. Jingle? It makes us remember stuff. Yeah. So, yep. So, because... God knew that we were going to make mistakes one with another. We would need to be reconciled one with another and that we would need to be kind and that we would need to be tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, just like Jen said, even as God for Christ's sake, because of that cross, we can be reconciled to God because he's done that for us. It should be nothing for us to reconcile with each other. Believer, you know, we're all going to say things. We're all going to do things. Um, yeah, texting is the worst. Oh, and we all, and, and, and like it's one of my favorite modes of communication. But I do understand that I have to watch it. But we also need to be aware of that when something comes across the text that may not sound right. You know what? Just, yeah, reconcile. Let them be brought back into favor. This is also, I'm going to take a moment. Sometimes there's hurt. Maybe when people leave the church. And maybe there's even someone online that's watching this that has been to Solid Rock for a time. And for whatever reason, have left, and there's hurt there. I just want to let you know that we want to reconcile you back to us as a body of believers. And that this is what Christianity is about, is forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven us. And there's no one that's not welcome here if you want to be on our team, so to speak. If you want to move in the same direction that we are, and that's moving forward for Christ. We want to bring it in. And I want it for those watching, and I want it for those here. I want us to bring it in and to love one another and to understand that reconciling is about putting that stuff behind and forgiving one another and bringing it in and being that team. And that's what we can do here. Do not live in your hurt. It's a bad place to be. I'm going to have a Sunday school lesson because I was listening to, this, pastor was listening to some clips from another preacher, Pastor Clark. I love him, the older Pastor Clark. And he's he just, he, 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 he is yeah, just, he's powerful. he's powerful. And you know what? No schooling, nothing like that. He is a powerful man of God, and he just lays it right on the line. It, it, it's not enjoy the now. Mm. I can't, now I can't think of it. I had pastor say it to me a couple times trying to remember it. But anyway, it, it's about enjoying the now. You know, but it was worded a different way. Do not live in your hurts. You have to find a way to get past it, especially when it's between believers. Okay, bitterness, like Jen said earlier, bitterness is going to eat at you like a cancer. And even if you think that you're past something, if you can't see pastor and you can't hear our name or the name of Solid Rock Baptist Church or the name of another Christian, mm -hmm. there's an issue if that makes you just. And that's what reconciliation is about, 
is overlooking, just forgiving, not overlooking, because if we sweep things under the thing, guess what? They're still there. You got to forgive and understand that we all make mistakes. Pastor makes mistakes, Mrs. Frost makes mistakes, but I've learned when I, I, I hope I don't, this doesn't sound right. I have no problem apologizing because I know me and I know I make mistakes and I know I say things and I know I've done things. I know I've grown over the years. I know, you know, and I know I'm going to make more mistakes. And I know I'm going to say something wrong to you, or you may think I said something wrong and I didn't. Okay, this is where this bring it in comes from, is just to remember, wait, we got a job to do here. Do not let Satan distract us with all these little whisperings in our ear all the time, which is another reason why it's so important. If you ever have somebody that Satan is used to whisper in your ear about your church or your pastor or your or your fellow believers, I'm sorry. I know you're hurting, but I'm going to point you back to them. I'm going to point you to pastor. I'm going to, you know, and let things get resolved. Being a listening ear does not resolve things. And a lot of times I think that we think we're not doing any harm by being that listening ear for that person. But actually we are because it's not resolving anything. It's not helping them along, okay? All it's just doing is giving them a listening ear and a chance for it to fester because it's being brought up again. What's going to heal it go is go talk to that person. Mm -hmm. And that, and, 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 and that just God, ask God to go before you and get this resolved. And sometimes it may never seem like it's resolved, but if you do your part in going to that person, then that's it. There's nothing more you can do but pray. Mm -hmm. And you will find that that weight is lifted off you. And you're, and you're saying to them, you're saying to that fellow believer, bring it in, bring it in. It is up to them if they decide to bring it in. Okay? Evan could turn me down when I say, bring it in, you know, but he, he doesn't. <laughs> And I love that. Um, but, you know, it's not always that way. You know, the team members on Devin's team, that when Coach said, bring it in, and they all kind of came into that huddle and were, you know, re realigning themselves, the ones that didn't come over because they're too busy eating their snack or drinking their Gatorade or whatever, they were out of the loop and they didn't know what was going on. And so they did not play effectively. Same thing. You know, all you can do is lead that horse to water. And I don't mean that unkind. You know what I'm saying is, is bring it in. And if you're the person that needs to be brought in, or if I am, put the pride aside and say, okay, this is reconciliation. You know, being, bringing back into favor with one another as believers, being reconciled back together. That's another thing with it, too, like say somebody comes up to you and says, well, I'm sorry if I said something to you or and, and the person on the other receiving end of it, you kind of have to have that same thing, like be a good willing to say, you know, accept that person there coming to you. They're not coming to you saying, well, this is what I'm going to say. Yeah. They're coming to you and just straight up, I'm sorry. Yep. You know. And you know what? It's not helpful to no. know and, and to say, oh, no, you didn't. I'm, I'm not offended. It's unforgivable. I can't talk to you. No, or even, or even acting like you weren't offended. Oh. Oh. That's not helpful either. Facebook. It's better to say, thank you for apologizing. It, you're right. It's, it hurt a little bit, and you don't even have to get into that. Yeah. Just acknowledge and say, thank you. Don't say, oh, that didn't bother me. It did. If it did, that's a lie. You know, and what good are you doing by doing that? You're not. Instead, be gracious and reconcile back to each other and be in one another's favor. That's what this is about. That's good, Jen. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we're not to have bad feelings between us. Anyone have Matthew 18, 15 to 17? Donna? Thee, thou hast sinned thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, 
Well, Joseph, we want us to know that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if you shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if you neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Okay. God is saying, get it right. You go to the person. And then if the person, if the person still doesn't want to forgive or want to, you know, acknowledge this, you bring another believer so that the words can be established and they and they can't say he never said that or she never came and said she was sorry, uh -uh. you know. And sometimes it goes further in there, and that's kind of talking about bringing before the church and stuff. But our 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 ideal here is to get it right with each other right off the bat and just make sure there's never hard feelings there's never and if you feel like something hurt and you can't you know you can't get past it after prayer and stuff go to the person and just say i just did you did you mean it this way it hurt a little bit and i i just wanted to see you know why you said that or what you mean yeah and if somebody comes to you and says that to you it's okay. It's good. It's a good thing to talk about things. You know, ma marriages where the spouses never, ever talk honestly do not last. You have to be able to talk about the way you're feeling and how things affect. You don't get petty. And the things that we can, you know, just be gracious on and be like, oh, they didn't mean it that way. But if something keeps gnawing at you, you got to get right. You got to be honest with each other. Yep. And because if we love God, we will love our brothers and sisters in Christ. 1 John 4, 20. Anyone have that? If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? There are Christians that have left our church. They say they love God, and yet they, they really do not like, I won't, maybe even hate, pastor and I, or pastor. There's not one person that has left here that I feel that way about. There's not. I love them all. And we should never, ever have those kind of feelings, but we should only have love for one another. You know, as believers in Christ, if we love God like we say we do, don't say you love God and then harbor hatred or bad feelings for a brother and sister in Christ. It doesn't work that way. And and you got to do what you have to do to get it right and not keep sweeping it under here because it, it's still going to be under there and it's still festering. And God was very clear in that verse about if you say you love God, you're going to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I was going to say also, don't take it so personal because 90, I'm just going to say from my, how I feel about it was it's not it's people who's rejecting and yeah is, is, and that's 90 percent of it people get upset because there's something that's preached or god's saying to them yeah they direct it to whoever yeah and and that's the majority of the time it's not really something that pastor did mm -hmm. or i did or one of you guys did it it's it boils down to it it's an issue between you know with their relationship with god whether they're actually a child of God or whether they're just someone who needs to get things right. So, um, And if we love our brothers and sisters in Christ, we will carry their burdens. This is just like a, a ladder, you know. Uh, Galatians 6, 2. Anyone have that one? Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we're going to bear one another's burdens. Bring it in. Refocus. And as someone, it, you know, if one of those players on Devin's team... If they were injured, they had a sprained ankle, guess what? They didn't stay on the bench when he said, bring it in. They're still a part of the team, but they're hurting. And so we still got to bring them in. We're missing ladies here today that need, we need to make sure that we're recon reconciling, that they know that we want them uh, back into the favor. They may think that they've gone too far or they haven't, you know, that we're not going to want them back. Sometimes people have that misunderstanding about our church here, like, you know, you don't want me back. Oh, yes, we do. 
we want to reconcile between believers and reconcile back like that and carry one another's burdens. And our compassion can make a difference. Jude 122. Anyone? Uh, Go ahead. Our compassion can make a difference. Compassion means, we've talked about it before, is just understanding we're not all at the same spot on the road in our journey and understanding that sometimes that person with the sprained ankle, so to speak, that teammate, that they need us to show compassion and to understand that we all don't think alike, we're not all on the same part of the journey, and we carry different hurts. And just kind of, um, when I worked as a CNA, we had to learn how to lift up the person in the correct way under their arm so that we didn't hurt us or them. Same thing here, is that we need to learn to lift up fellow believers, reconcile them back so that we're in favor with one another, and say, it's okay, it's okay, keep going. I'll help you along on this journey and never write anybody off, okay? So that's what this lesson is about. And I, I just put the, we won't turn there, but Jesus had compassion. Jesus had compassion for the people, and so should we. So bring it in circle of friends. Let's purpose to bring it in a huddle and unite and refocus on our race. You know, because I put up their second, or First Timothy 4, 7, 8. You know, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my race. You know, that's what we're on. We're on a race here. Um, but sometimes, just make sure that sometimes we're doing that arm lock with that other Christian say, I'll carry you, I'll help carry you for a little while. And uh, remember that we're all on this journey together. And, and in, enjoy the journey. Okay? All right, thank you. We're going to say goodbye to our...